Hey, I'm Tony Moreland, and this is POW, podcast of wisdom from the Samsung Developer Program, where we talk about the latest tech, new trends, and give insight into all of the opportunities available for developers looking to create for Samsung. On today's show, I interview Swale Nunez, head of B2B Developer Relations for Samsung. Swale is part of the team that launched AppStack, the cloud software marketplace for businesses. Not only do we talk about the advantages for partners bringing their software solutions to AppStack and the benefits for businesses being able to easily manage their workplace apps, but we also have a little fun discovering the creative and inspirational person that Swale is. He even trademarked his own name. Enjoy. Hey, Swale. Thanks for joining me on the podcast. I have to ask, who is Swale Nunez? That's actually a pretty good question. So... Uh, I pride myself on a couple of things. Uh, the most, I think the thing that's dearest to me is is human creativity. So I, uh, if you go on my LinkedIn, it'll say I'm a human creativity connoisseur. Oh, wow. So what exactly is that? <laughs> yeah. But I've, I've always had this deep fascination for human creativity. Uh, and so I've studied it um, in every regard in the sense of like professionally or um, in structure. But in reality, it's just my own personal um as I, as I make my way through this thing called life, I kind of jot down notes and, and just kind of study creative people. And because of that, I myself have done some creative things. And uh, th- there's this, this scientist who I, or inventor, I can't remember his name at the moment, but he once said that um, if I tell you all the things that I've done, they they don't necessarily go well together and it'll discredit my credibility. So I, <laughs> gotcha. I, I, I'm mindful of that. So if I tell you the things I've done either in art or in music or in entertainment and in architecture and all these things, you're like, yo, who is this guy? Oh, wow. For this conversation, let's just say I'm a creativity connoisseur. Wonderful. Wonderful. I can't wait to uh, learn more about you. So you are with Samsung. Tell me, what is your title? So my official title is... Uh, Head of B2B developer relations. Um, and a huge part of that is um, ha- has a lot to do with bringing innovation to the enterprise. But not only that, um, advocating for the developers who are in that particular space, building the, 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 the technology and the solutions that solve real world problems. And I know our main topic today on the podcast is AppStack. So this is something new for Samsung. Tell me a little bit about AppStack. When did it get started and, and what exactly is it? So uh, AppStack, if I were to kind of describe it in one line, it's a new, highly curated uh, cloud app marketplace. Um, I think we were officially launched August 19th. It, it, for us, it, it, there's there's two particular um, stakeholders beyond ourselves. It's the, the our SMB customers and then our preferred partners. For our SMB customers, it's helping them find the right apps for their businesses. But um, it is also a great accelerator for SMB sales for our preferred partners. So just in case people aren't aware, can you explain what the acronym SMB is? Small and medium businesses. And I remember the first time I heard it too, I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's, it's small and medium businesses. So basically, AppStack is a location where partners can post their apps, their solutions online, and then end users such as SMBs, they can go and find their solutions through AppStack, correct? Correct. Um, for SMBs, not only find, so it provides like a central place for our customers to find, purchase, um, provision, and manage your cloud apps. And then from a partner perspective, um, uh, it's exciting for our, for our customers uh, because they can kind of tap into our ecosystem as well as kind of uh, uh, get some benefit from our media spend, you know, the behemoth that is Samsung. So you said this actually launched back in August? It did. Um, uh, it, it, so it's it's relatively new. I mean, it's 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 what I'm watching it now because it's it, it's something that we've been working on for some time, uh, trying to make it uh, as the best, create the best product as possible. And one thing I want to mention about AppStack is that it's highly curated. So kind of seeing it kind of develop and now uh, it coming to life and then watch. It's like I have a newborn. So it's kind of it's it's synonymous to that in a sense that I'm watching it kind of crawl and then walk and then seeing it develop. It's, it's actually a beautiful thing to watch. That has to be exciting. So what sort of industries can take advantage of uh, offering their solutions to SMB and users on AppStack? So it's, it's not really limited to a specific set of industries. Um, if you have a SaaS solution targeting SMBs, uh, then you should take advantage of it. Um, and whether that's front office, if we think about pr- productivity or marketing applications or back office, like 
accounting, payroll, HR, um, and also vertical specific, right? So vertical oriented, like restaurants, real estate, home service. I can think of legal construction. So again, it's not specific to a particular industry. Um, as long as you offer uh, um, a self-service uh, SaaS solution that's catered towards SMBs, I think we're, we're right there for you. So what exactly is SaaS? So, so SaaS is an acronym. It's software as a service. Uh, some you might have heard it in times past as like on-demand software, uh, but it's, it's it is a licensing and delivery model for for uh, applications, right? Where that that delivery is based on a subscription base, and the applications generally live on the internet. Gotcha. So up in the cloud. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So uh, an example might be something like Netflix. Are they a uh... A SaaS service? Correct. Uh, from an enterprise perspective, you, if you think of your your Salesforce, uh, Microsoft has a lot of uh, uh, SaaS solutions, Oracle, that type of stuff. So what's the benefit for these partners to offer their solutions? There's actually a few. I think uh, the most attractive is our ecosystem. We have roughly 100 million active mobile devices in the U.S., and that number grows by 12 million annually. 52% is actually in the SMB space. So for our partners, it, 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 we open up our, our customer base uh, for them to be able to kind of, one, um, increase their SMB sales. Um, and then it, it's specifically targeted because we understand our customers. Uh, we have enough insights to curate an experience for them. And then for our, our, our SaaS partners, is an opportunity to, to take advantage of that. That sounds great. So what is it that your team at Samsung can do to help partners be successful? So... Um, we talk about from a from a just opening up our, our, our customer base and then increase the spotlight on your applications. We also offer assistance in regards to getting you ramped up or, or getting you into the app stack marketplace itself um, from a technical perspective with API integration. And then in some cases, and we take this as a case case to case basis where we can offer uh, supplemental dev support. Right. So kind of help you get to that um, to the point where your, your your app is actually featured in app stack. So what else is the team doing to help drive awareness for these partners to be successful with their apps? Yeah, so uh, we, I, I, I spoke earlier about uh, the media spend, but beyond that, um, we've done app stack ad campaigns across Samsung social channels. Um, we've also done uh, a lot of ad campaigns across various social media platforms, right? So on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your Twitter, you'll see a lot of uh, app stack ads. Um, and on top of that, our, our general manager, um, Tahir Bebahani, um, he's done several um, public facing engagements and announcements and has, has been a speaker at a few of those engagements. And uh, he used that as an opportunity to kind of introduce AppStack to the general public as well. As you know, there's been a big shift because of COVID-19 and the pandemic. Just, you know, not only, you know, how we function in our daily lives, but, you know, around business and how businesses are functioning. So. Can you tell me how COVID-19 has impacted AppStack? Um, yeah, I mean, COVID has affected everyone and everything, right? I think um, uh, this is new to everyone. Um, and unfortunately, it's it's become our new normal, right? Um, and there's been uh, impact both from a customer and a, and a partner standpoint. Um, and seeing that we particularly cater to SMB uh, and that segment has been significantly impacted. Um, uh, it's definitely had impacts on, on AppStack uh, as a whole. But what we found that uh, the, the number one priority for SMB is moving to, to the cloud and mobile SaaS apps. And they're looking to, to access their SaaS apps on mobile devices, right? So in a way, uh, Samsung is helping to facilitate that, right? So yes. giving them the opportunity to, to not only become touchless, but um, be able to access the apps that they need to run their businesses, especially in, in this time, making that more seamless um, and, and without with less friction, uh, given the circumstances. So I love what you said when you when you uh, kind of use the analogy that you know, this is a app stack is like your baby that's starting to grow and starting to see it crawl. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure now that you've seen some companies put their solutions on AppStack and you've seen that grow. So what sort of apps are you excited about that you're seeing on AppStack? If I were to step back um, for a second, um, I, I was a part of the, a lot of the, the, the business side of this and the relationship and, and, and um, partner on, onboarding, right? So <clears throat> I went from being a consumer of these applications to actually being being involved in more of a, a business conversation, right? And a lot of these applications are applications that I use myself, in particular, uh, G Suite or Canva. So so 
being given an opportunity to now engage them from this perspective was not only insightful, it, it was it, it felt good. Um, uh, and especially from a consumer perspective, right? It's like um, uh, there's this thing you 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 never want to meet uh, your either your, the, the people that you admire uh, because in fear that they're not who they claim to be. Sure. But in this particular case, like uh, especially from uh, us being technologists and and having developed in times past or being developed active developers now to kind of have these conversations with these companies that are actually doing it and doing it right, um, uh, it was actually refreshing and it, it it was it felt good. And a lot of these, like I said, Canva. Um, G Suite, uh, Sign Now, Paymo. There's there's a, a huge, um, well, I use the term huge uh, loosely because uh, it is curated. But there's there's a, a few applications that I'm I'm excited about, and the ones that are there now that we that we launched it are definitely on the list. Um, and and there's definitely a few coming that I'm also excited for, like ClickUp, um, uh, FreshBooks. But in all honesty, it just Whoever's on board at this moment, I, I'm truly excited to have them be a part of it because, again, there's some personal satisfaction that I get from this as well. Are there any types of apps that aren't on AppStack yet that you would like to see brought to the platform? Um, I think we've we've done a really good job of of identifying the ones that we want to be a part of it, and we've identified this, the specific categories specific to our um, SMB customers and what their needs are, and I think. Um, we haven't made announcements on a, on a, a, a few of them that are in the pipeline, but if, if I took a quick glance at, at those that are in the pipeline and I'm, I'm excited about the list that's going to come after, right? Um, this, I, we, we, when we talk about AppStack and the partners that are involved, it, it is a, uh, it's a dynamic list, right? So it grows sure. uh, as we go along. So I'm excited with the ones that come and I, I don't want to let the cat out the bag, uh, but there's a few <laughs> good ones that I, that I'm looking forward to. Excellent. Excellent. I can't wait to uh, to hear about that. So tell me, what are the end user benefits uh, related to AppStack? So as we mentioned before, it, uh, AppStack provides for SMB customers uh, a central place uh, for them to find, purchase, provision, manage their cloud applications. But beyond that, it, it, it comes at a discount, right? So it's uh, and it's also a, a central place to manage all your subscriptions. So um, at, what that does is it takes the focus off um, the other things uh, and gives you gives those our SMB customers the ability to kind of work on building their business, right? And not have to worry about mm-hmm. everything else, um, but just focus on building their businesses and, and making it uh, the best business they can be given the circumstances. So um, again, from a from a from a business perspective, it it it, it centralizes your subscriptions. Uh, those subscriptions come at a discount. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to kind of bundle your your software and your hardware together um, and make that that purchasing flow uh, a more seamless one. Yeah, I could see that be really beneficial for businesses just starting out when, you know, may, they may not have a lot of revenue being generated at the moment, but they still need to get their their business in order. Definitely. I know, you know, it was a big announcement when AppStack just launched. Tell me, is there anything else you know, news related that's coming up that we can get excited about any events that you can, uh, you can share outside of the fact that it is the, uh, the, the best, um, cloud app marketplace out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I, I, like I said earlier, I, I think I'm AppStack is, is big, um, or what makes AppStack important and relevant and, and beneficial, um, are the partners we get on board. Um, so our excitement comes, um, when we can, when we have partners that we know our SMB customers need, um, and if we're able to kind of deliver on that, going back to my original, uh, when I started uh, about being create, being a creative and, and designing, uh, um, my my approach to creativity and design is human centered, right? Um, so we build for our customers, we build for the people, we design solutions for the people who are trying to solve problems for. In this particular case, it's our SMB customers, and for them, we're identifying uh, the key applications and solutions they need. So um, exciting news is we have some really good applications that exist in AppStack now, um, and we'll continue to deliver um, on those partnerships so that to make the life of an SMB uh, more easier. So let's talk about companies that want to uh, become a partner. Uh, What's the first step? You know, what do they do to offer their solution on AppStack? The first step is to be the best in your category. Um, I, I want to reemphasize uh, how important having AppStack be curated sure. uh, is to us and to our customers, right? So 
if you are the best in your category, we'll come knocking. Um, and beyond that, um, not only a SaaS service that specifically targets um, SMBs, uh, it has to be self-service, right? So um, it, it shouldn't have to require a lot of hand-holding for onboarding because we okay. want, again, the whole idea here is to make this um, not a burden for our SMB customers and make it as, 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 as streamlined as possible, right? So the less touch, the better. So be the best in your category, uh, top two, top three. And also uh, have a solution that, again, is self-service that anyone can um, uh, quickly onboard from a, from a subscription and provisioning standpoint. I'm pretty sure you can hear that siren <laughs> behind me. Yeah, we can, we can hang on for a second. <laughs> That's funny. So tell me, what's the best way for companies to learn more about AppStack so they can get started? The, the easiest way and the most uh, resourceful uh, that has the, the, the most resource available to you is samsung.com slash app stack. Um, it has everything from um, the list of, of companies or, or partners that we already have. It actually um, gives you insights and roadmap into uh, the partners that are in the pipeline. It has a Q&A. It has additional resources and write, write-ups to help kind of um, get you uh up up to speed with AppStack as quickly as possible. So that would be the first place to go to to learn more about AppStack. Say the URL again one more time. It is uh Samsung.com slash AppStack. Excellent. And we will link to that in the show notes. I'm super excited about you know the new launch of AppStack and, and all the solutions that are out there and looking forward to um you know new apps being released. Let's talk a little bit about you. All right. What was your journey to Samsung? So um, oddly enough, um, uh, I, I, there was a point in my life I wanted to give up technology um, uh, as a whole. I was a .NET developer, and I literally uh, I was in a position where I'm like, yo, this cannot be it. Um, and I was trapped behind my desk uh, writing code, um, which I, I'm a fan of writing code, I, the, the creative aspect of it and being able to kind of create these things um, from just lines of code. But I, I had an opportunity uh, to travel the world um, and then be more of a from a presenter side of things. Right. So I still developed heavily, but um, there was these gaps where I can kind of take the technology that I either developed or was a part of and then I present them um, to, to people on these kind of road shows from a, from a technical perspective. So I had a stint at BlackBerry doing that. And then uh, a few years ago, uh, I think roughly six years ago, Samsung um, was, was focusing on enterprise mobility and that was the space that I was in and um, there was an opportunity there. Uh, so uh, I got tapped to come over to Samsung and then uh, that's where kind of my Samsung journey started. And it started from a solution innovation perspective, enterprise mobility, this mashup, and then it transitioned into, I've always advocated for developers. I, I think um, developers, in especially in larger corporations, they might not necessarily have the voice that they need, um, and especially in the enterprise space. I live in the enterprise space and why it's, why it's so important to me because I think enterprise gives you an opportunity to solve real world problems, right? Um, consumer side is fun and it, I mean, there's some interesting aspects there, but um, you, you can't truly appreciate a, a second until you are you see it from the lens of a first responder or somebody in the healthcare sure. industry, right? Sure. And if we can help build applications um, uh, to help kind of make their jobs easier, it'll ultimately make the world a better place, right? Because they yeah. are the ones that are out saving the world. So I've advocated for developers and that advocation for developers gave me an opportunity to start um, doing uh, um, B2B developer focused engagements, kind of creating uh, um, opening up tools and, and resources to support them and then kind of taking uh, this developer relations on the road and then kind of having uh, enterprise focus um, um, tech for good engagements and, and events uh, specifically uh, uh, for those uh, particular developers uh, from a Samsung perspective. And Samsung has been really good at uh, providing the resources and, and then helping me kind of bring this thing together. Uh, we're still, it's still a work in progress, but I'm happy with the progress we've made. And even though there's, there's a long way to go, I think uh, we're, we're definitely moving in the right direction. Very well said. I actually first met you, I think it was about a year and a half ago. So I'm in the West Coast and you are... I am in New York City. New York City, exactly. Our team came out to New York to um, teach a class at one of the local universities. But then also we did a meetup 
group in the evening where we had a bunch of developers uh, come out. You were part of the team that was on a panel Correct, yeah. uh, at that event. That was a lot of fun. Um, you know, my takeaway from that event was meeting the community that was yeah. there. Uh, definitely a very vibrant uh crowd that, yes, that came yeah. to that meetup. I actually had a really nice conversation um, uh, with a young lady who was a developer building some apps very much around the issues that she was uh, medically having. Yeah. She had um, uh, some some medical issues going on and it, here she was creating an app not, you know, for the wider community. It was specifically for her Correct. so yeah. that she can try and make her life better just was it's just so exciting when you actually can get face to face so i'm i'm really looking forward to you know once we all get through this pandemic and and we can get back out to doing these live events because that's where the people are i mean that's really where you start to touch on that outside of all of this work that you do which is amazing i appreciate that what do you like to do for fun uh so I think you you did a really good, uh, I'll use your last sentence as a segue, Um, but fun for me is is, uh, uh, traveling, right? It's it's how I get inspired um, and I'm all about uh, democratizing innovation, right? And then kind of finding, having it come from everybody and then having traveled the world, a small part of the world, because I mean, there's a lot of world out there still left to be covered. Sure. But you, but you, you, you brought up a good point about touching the people, um, and me just being fascinated with human creativity. Um, I, I love to travel, and up until this year, I, I would backpack every year. I'd pick a part of the world to go, really, um, load up my backpack, and then and then uh, go touch the people, um, go out and kind of explore. And oddly enough, I was I just got back on a plane after six months. Uh, a weekend ago, right? And it felt different. I remember I used to tell people getting on a plane uh, was like getting in an Uber for me, right? I, I do it so much that it, it doesn't have the same impact or significance. Um, and it wasn't until my most recent trip, which was the last weekend that I got on a plane that I I fell in love with getting on a plane again, right? Because sure. I had forgotten how that felt. And I remember as a kid, uh, so I'm originally from Belize. Uh, I was born and raised in Belize. I didn't come to the States till I was a, a man, technically. But I remember I would come to the States during the summer and two weeks away from my actual departure date, I already felt the excitement. I knew what I was going to wear. I put out everything because I was so <laughs> excited about it. Um, and then as I became an adult and traveled so much, the the excitement didn't come from the anticipation anymore. It, it came from being in the actual places. Right. Sure. But with this trip and being away from a, from from flying and traveling, I fell in love with the idea of anticipating uh, 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 traveling again. Right, sure. so it, it felt good. Uh, I was nervous. Um, <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, but it it, it went well. So uh, uh, support to the frontline workers, everybody who is uh, creating, uh, at least kind of actively. From our doctors to our nurses to our the, the the grocery store workers to the airline employees, everybody who is um, making this as normal as it can be given the circumstances. Yes. yes, definitely. Very well said. So, if people want to contact you or the AppStack team, what is the best way for them to do that? So, I'd, I'd recommend the same URL I said earlier: samsung.com/appstack. Um, there's a be a partner, um, and there's contact information there as well. Um, me specifically. Uh, my LinkedIn is Swale. Uh, there's an accent over my E. And uh, you'll notice on my LinkedIn, it is a registered trademark. So it's Swale and a registered trademark. Right? <laughs> really? Um, and you might find that <laughs> odd, but this is my mind again. I actually have my name trademarked. Wow. Um, and I went from when I was a kid, it took me a while to really appreciate my name to the point where to now where I truly appreciate my name and I don't want anybody else to kind of misuse it. So uh, on LinkedIn, it's Swale and the, the trademark symbol. That's wonderful. You know, and you know, your name is very memorable. Thank you. I appreciate that. A year and a half ago when I was at that event in New York, I got to say, yeah, I probably could not remember many of the other names, but yeah, I could not forget your name. And yeah, thank you. Excellent character, wonderful personality. It's been an absolute joy to have you on the podcast. So thank no, you very much. No, and then uh, um, I, I appreciate the the platform. I appreciate the opportunity. But not only that, I, um, one of my things, and I've said it a, a few times on this on this uh, podcast, is that 
um, I advocate for developers because I understand that their voice uh, is, is not necessarily heard as much as it should be. I've always believed that uh, developers should be a part of R&D for any uh, corporation or any entity or any organization. So uh, I will continue to champion you because you are creating a platform for developers. Um, and this is we need this um, and continue to do this. And, and please do not stop doing this. And I, I whatever I can do to kind of help amplify your voice and uh, this platform let me know and I'll do my best to do that. Truthfully, the main reason that I ended up coming to Samsung, for those that don't know my past, um, I was a freelance graphic designer for you know well over 20 years, never had a corporate job, always worked for myself. And when I started um, designing apps and selling them on the app store uh, for Samsung, just as a side gig, yeah. to see how much Samsung would reach out to me as just this one individual, this this very small developer, you know, selling some apps, seeing how available they were with me making, you know, direct phone calls. Samsung started inviting me out to meetings to help improve their software. And all along, I can't believe this is Samsung reaching out to me. I'm just one individual. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I think I can go work for this company. So I put yeah. behind my business. I've been working now. It's getting close to two years now. I've carried that momentum as far as making myself available to developers. I am always, um, you know, shocking people on like YouTube when they post a comment, you know, about one of my videos asking a question. Sometimes within minutes, I'm giving them, yeah. you know, a public reply. And they're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe Samsung just replied to me. Yeah. That just shows you how a lot of our team, you know, not just our team, your team, it's kind of like the thing with Samsung. We definitely are supporting our developers and want them to know that, hey, we can talk to you. We want to work together and make our solutions even better. No, no, 100 percent. And I, I want to say this uh, and it'll help all the developers and, and the, the future partners who want to partner with AppStack and Samsung in general. One thing you brought up is kind of making yourself accessible. Having had to to kind of reach out to a lot of these these partners, it's difficult to to find the right email address or contact information to get to, to the right person, right? Sure. Um, and a lot of them is just like support email address that's available. But um, as you grow your business, uh, whether from a development standpoint or an enterprise or a startup standpoint, um, be mindful of the fact that you want uh, uh, yourself to be e- easily accessible, right? Um, because there's partnerships that you may lose because they don't know how to get in contact with you. So uh, be mindful of that. And uh, I've always said, if, if tomorrow I started my own um, either dev shop or my own startup on, on the first page, there's going to be either at the uh, uh, at the bottom or a prominent location, uh, contact information to reach me. If you want to reach me, here's how you reach me, um, because yeah. that is important. There's a lot of people who are looking to do business with you, looking to partner with you, and they want you need to make that uh, seamless as possible. I, I love that. So with that said, would you like to share your email? <laughs> My friend, yes. Okay. So uh, uh, s.nunez, N-U-N-E-Z, at sea.samsung.com. Um, and that is my email address. And I, I answer emails. So if there might be a delay, but I will definitely respond. Well, hey, again, Swale, I absolutely appreciate you taking the time to uh, join me on the podcast today. No, thank you. Have a good one. Looking to start creating for Samsung? Download the latest tools to code your next app. Or... Get software for designing apps without coding at all. Sell your apps to the world on the Samsung Galaxy Store. Check out developer.samsung.com today and start your journey with Samsung. The PAL Podcast is brought to you by the Samsung Developer Program and produced by Tony Moreland.